Happy Halloween. I'm here with T-Rex. What's a good Halloween story? Well, once there was this thing called radio, okay, and people used to listen to it, they loved it, you know, they'd turn it on, they'd listen with their whole family, and then there became companies with seeds in their name who bought the stations and buried them deeply underground. That's scary. Poof, I'm shaking right now. Wow. So, didn't vampires take over radio? I think so. I think so. The Night of the Living Dead. You <laughs> saw the movie, and, uh, you know... I mean, just think about radio in Sacramento. Is there any music station you can turn on that you feel like is even remotely plugged in and not completely on? Not terrestrial radio, but maybe internet radio like OneMusicNetwork.com. I, I completely agree. Like our 80s station, Classic 80s Top 40, I'm there, T-Rex. We also have a Hot Country station, I'm also there as T-Rex. Sports and, Talk. And we have a Sports Talk show on today's talk channel every morning from 10 to 11. Well, that's very uh, reassuring that there's something to turn to, but let's right. get back to the right. spooky haunted story of radio, okay. how, how it all kind of right. came apart and mm -hmm. died. I mean, at one time, right. like you say, it was, it was people's best friend, mm -hmm. and now it's become kind of wicked. I don't know if you heard this story a, a few weeks ago, it was in the trades, and I don't know if you still read you know, the radio trade. Not much. Okay, but maybe you, uh, All Access, who I think... I love All Access. You know, they have a good, lot of credibility. Yeah, there's some good stuff on there, yeah. and, uh, and Joel Denver, a uh, great guy. Great and, guy, old, I know. Old radio guy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there was a story, and it was in all the trades, Bob Pittman, uh, the head... Uh, Clear Channel. Right. Yeah. Was going to make radio cool again. This you know? guy used to work at MTV, and right. he's one of the guys who made MTV uncool, but go ahead. Right, right. But he's going to make radio cool. He's going to, you know, and I can't remember what they were going to do. Um, they were going to pay him a million dollars that, that they borrowed from right. a bank. Right. right. And they were going to they were going to make sure they even had a bigger <laughs> private jet than he had before. <laughs> and so he was going to think radio was real cool. The thing, the thing I would like to say to radio is is radio is headed for I think somewhat of a rebirth, but it's it, it's going to be so far into the future, you know, with these big corporations going away and then small ownerships kind of coming in and, and maybe doing their thing, that radio will probably be virtually dead by that time. I mean, it will, it will not only just be on life support, the doctor will have came in and said, you may want to say bye to your friend, uh, he's dying. He, he, and a lot he's not going to make it through the day. Don't you think a lot of it has to do with internet radio, like in your car? Uh, I think what it has to do is radio has chosen to go down the road of not having personalities on their air. Mm -hmm. okay. It's and kind of dead souls oriented. <laughs> <laughs> it's zombies. You've seen The Walking Dead? Come on! You know what this is all about. Um, and uh, internet radio, what internet radio has done, in, in places like OneMusicNetwork.com, mm -hmm. has embraced having personalities on the air and, and letting them do what they've done to reach an audience. Mm -hmm. To, uh, you know, look at the TV show. I, I look at TV a lot and I see radio shows on TV. Ellen, you know, look at The Ellen Show. That's like an old radio show, a personality who comes out and says, hey, we're here to have a good time, and, you know, does some funny little skits and games, and, you know, says, I'll see you tomorrow, you know? And so people come back and see Ellen tomorrow, who's she going to interview today? With it's like ra radio with pictures. Right, exactly. And that's what radio used to do. You used know? to paint pictures in your right. mind. Yeah, and you'd have fun, and, you know, uh, the morning show host, or the afternoon show host, or the night guy, you know? You, you felt like they were, you know, kind of guiding you on this adventure. And that doesn't happen on real radio. Because real radio has become a ghost story. Right. So as we look at the ghost of radio, mm -hmm. what's a great memory that reassures us that radio was good at one time? Well, I, I think I think that there's still essences of it there. I think that people still have such a fondness of growing up with radio that it's still there. I think. You see it, I see it more in like sports talk radio now than I do anything that you You like know why I think that is? Because sports talk is actually about real games that take place right. in the real world. Right. Whereas a lot of radio is just fake. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think music radio has, mm -hmm. has went such, down such a bad road, whatever type of music you like to a listen to. A lot of to. fake music. It's just canned. It's yeah. just, you know. Uh, they play 12 songs in a row. And 12 manufactured songs in a row by three companies. <laughs> yeah, and then they stop for a, a, a long commercial break that's like a half hour. <laughs> and then they come back and play some more fake songs yeah. and tell you about the concert tickets they're going to give away tomorrow that one person will win. <laughs> one person will be able to see. Uh, whoever, Michael Jackson in concert. Yeah. And then they come back and they play you some more the, songs. The and ghost of Michael Jackson. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> and so I think that that's why radio. What's funny is I think I would, last time I worked in radio was in 2006. Okay. At um, I did work in Palm Springs, but before that, a station in San Francisco okay. called Energy 92.7. Okay. And uh, they had backed off Michael Jackson. Uh -huh. When you said that, it reminded me of something. Uh -huh. Because of all the sex scandals. Right, he right, had. right, right. And I was thinking, why are you guys scared to play like one of the biggest artists of all time? Right. When they're all about stats, all about <laughs> trying to play. Get more people to listen. What yeah. the people. Yeah. So they wouldn't play Billie Jean because they were really afraid that right. that would alienate. Well, somebody. I think that was radio as a whole completely yeah. just backed off Michael Jackson because there was just that negative connotation, which yeah. was too bad because Michael had some great music, but. Because he was a thriller to a lot of people. <laughs> and just not having kids go over to see Uncle Michael. I mean, it just yeah. didn't go well. You know, I, I think, you know, Michael Jackson, whether he was a child molester or not, was a strange guy. Okay, and you know, unfortunately, I, I think Michael needed some help. He, he didn't get it, and so here's somebody who's a great musician, but on the other hand, there's so much baggage and so much weird feeling. You had a hard time listening to his music. Well, I mean, it's kind of like uh, Guns N' Roses. Uh, everyone thought they were great till Axl Rose put out a Charles Manson song. Right. Um, does that really change the music that people like, though? I mean, it, it's... Uh, I, I, I think that there was enough of a negative connotation with Michael Jackson at that time that it was probably a safe bet for radio stations to probably stay away from his music at least for a while. Because I'll tell you, as a live DJ who played a lot in the Bay Area the past decade, mm -hmm. I found that I could always get away with Michael Jackson songs. Mm -hmm. Don't Stop Till You Get yeah. Enough, yeah, yeah. Uh, Billie Jean, Beat It. Those songs still went over well mm -hmm. at the same time that radio was afraid to play them. Yeah, but you got to remember, radio is afraid of its own shadow. Right, and will right. radio is such a copycat industry right. that I remember when I was working for another company and they were complaining about Clear Channel. And this is when they started doing the national contesting. But once they seen that Clear Channel got away with it and they were able to do it, then they did it. And they did everything Clear Channel did. They were a smaller company, but yet they would tell you how bad Clear Channel was. Yeah. And they copied everything Clear Channel did. And so it's yeah. such a copycat industry. And Clear Channel got fined for uh, a running fake contests. Right, right. Yeah. You know, and among other things, there was also the payola scandal that we'll talk about in another interview okay. at some point. But a lot of um, the top radio companies were fined millions of dollars right. um, that they settled on uh, to make the case go away uh, mm -hmm. for... Um, actually uh, taking bribes for playing music, which, let me, which helped yeah, ruin yeah. music. Yeah, let me say this about payola, though. Mm -hmm. The reason the radio industry as a whole, and I'm talking owners and, and that sort of things, didn't like payola, wasn't that somebody was getting money under the table, it was that they weren't getting money under the table, and right. the music directors and the program directors were getting money under the table. That's the reason they didn't like it. Yeah, it's yeah. all about greed. Never forget that. Yeah. Just as uh, Mick Jagger once said in the song, Sympathy for the Devil, <laughs> please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. That's, right. That's right. basically what he's saying is the devil. Right. And with that, that concludes our Halloween special. Thank you very much, T-Rex. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>